Today's topic of discussion is uh, oral anticoagulants. Hello and welcome to Pharmacomania. I am Dr. Shanaz Malik. Today we are going to discuss oral anticoagulants. Oral anticoagulants are used for the maintenance therapy and it uh, inhibits the deposition of fibrin in the blood vessel. Now classification of oral anticoagulants are direct thrombin inhibitor is debigatron. Direct throm factor 10A inhibitors are Riva, Roxabane, and Apixabane. Last uh, word is the band. It means it is the factor 10A inhibitors. Cumarin derivatives are warfarin, acinocumorol, and dicumorol. These are the oral anticoagulants. Cumarin derivatives are most commonly used oral uh, anticoagulants like warfarin and acinocumorol and it, uh, these are the act only in vivo and they are vitamin k antagonist so mechanism of action of oral anticoagulants it act on the factor 2 factor 7 factor 9 and factor 10 they are synthesized in the liver as an inactive protein these factors are rich in glutamic acid residues and are carboxylated in liver in presence of vitamin K. So, vitamin K is the cofactor of the formation of the uh, factor 2, 7, 9 and 10. So, carboxylation of glutamic acid residue is, is necessary for the clotting factor 2 bind calcium which plays an important role in coagulation. So, here is the mechanism of action of the warfarin. So, discarboxylated factor 2, 7, 9 and 10 in presence of reduced vitamin K, they carboxylated into factor 2, 7, 9 and 10. And so, uh, carboxylation of this factor, reduced vitamin K is required and this reduced vitamin K convert into vitamin K epoxide and this epoxide is uh, recycled into reduced vitamin K in presence of vitamin k epoxide reductase enzyme and warfarin is inhibiting this vitamin k epoxide reductase enzyme so uh, inactive form to active form of the vitamin k is not possible because of uh, there is uh, absence of vitamin k epoxide reductase enzyme by inhibiting with the with, uh, warfarin so this active form of vitamin K is unavailable to formation of carboxylation of the uh, coagulating factors. So vitamin K is converted into inactive epoxide form by oxidation and regenerated into active form by epoxide reductase enzyme. Warfarin is a cumarin derivative and has structure similar to that of vitamin K. So, warfarin is competitively inhibit the synthesis of vitamin K dependent factor 2, factor 7, factor 9 and factor 10 by inhibiting epoxide reductase enzyme thus producing anticoagulant effect. The onset and duration of anticoagulant effect of the warfarin is delayed. It depends on the half-lives of the coagulating factor which are already present in the plasma and uh, it's declined very slowly over the period of time 1 to 3 days. Pharmacokinetic of oral coagulants is it is almost completely absorbed after oral administration and highly bound to the protein a uh, plasma protein freely cross the placental barrier so it can be uh, harmful for the fetus and metabolize in liver and inactivate uh, in, inactivated metabolites are excreted in urine and stool it is long half life like 40 hours and duration of action is 2 to 3 days and acinocumorol is rapid or in onset bus but so duration of action now adverse drug reaction of the oral anticoagulants. So most common adverse drug reaction is the bleeding. Bleeding can be occur from anywhere in the body like skin, pulmonary, gastrointestinal and urinary tract. Bleeding can be controlled by oral or parenteral vitamin K1. About 6 to 24 hours is required for the synthesis of clotting factor after injection of the vitamin K1. So, in emergency condition, fresh frozen plasma should be given in the severe bleeding for immediate replacement of the clotting factor. 
Oral anticoagulant therapy is monitored by measuring international normalized ratio. Other adverse drug reaction of the oral anticoagulants are like teratogenicity. Warfarin is contraindicated during pregnancies because uh, it is crosses the placental barrier and it causes uh, adverse drug reaction occur in the fetus like nasal hypoplasia, CNS abnormalities, fetal hemorrhage, abortion and intrauterine death can occur. Uh, skin necrosis is the rare complication that occur within the first week of the therapy. The skin lesion can be seen over the breast, buttocks, abdomen and thighs. Other rare adverse effects are like uh, diarrhea, alopecia, urticaria, dermatitis, abdominal uh, cramps and anorexia can be seen. Now drug interaction of oral anticoagulants are like combination of warfarin and cholesteramine. So cholesteramine is the bile acid binding resin which bind with the warfarin and reduce the absorption of warfarin from the gut and decrease the bioavailability and anticoagulant effect of the warfarin. Other drugs like the barbiturate, carbamazepine and rifampicin. These drugs are enzyme inducer and increase the metabolic clearance of the warfarin and decrease the anticoagulant effect of warfarin. Warfarin and oral contraceptive pills. Oral contraceptive pills uh, increase the level of the clotting factor and decrease the anticoagulant effect. Warfarin and phenytoin or sulfonamide. Uh, these drugs are very highly plasma protein bounding. This drug displaces the warfarin from plasma protein site, binding site and increase free plasma concentration of warfarin, which can result in bleeding and enhance anticoagulant effect. Warfarin and erythromycin and metronidazole or metronidazole. Erythromycin and metronidazole are enzyme inhibitors so it uh, inhibit the enzymes and decrease the metabolism uh, metabolic clearance of the warfarin and increase anticoagulant effect warfarin and tetracycline tetracycline is broad spectrum antibiotic and it suppress the bacterial flora and decrease vitamin k production and potentiate the warfarin effect warfarin and cefoperazone and Ceftriaxone. Uh, due to this drug, causes severe bleeding can occur due to hypoprothrombinemia. Warfarin and aspirin or other NSAIDs. Uh, NSAIDs having antiplatelet effect and displace the warfarin from the plasma protein site and thus potentiate the warfarin effect. Now, factors affecting warfarin actions are liver diseases and hyperthyroidism, uh, result in decreased level of clotting factor and enhance anticoagulant effect of the warfarin. Excessive intake of vitamin K and hereditary uh, warfarin resistance decreases anticoagulant effect of the warfarin. Oral direct thrombin inhibitors like dabigatran, ataxylate, it is prodrug and hydrolyze into dabigatran. It, uh, it is direct thrombin inhibitor, so it is reversibly blocked the thrombin and produces rapid anticoagulant action. Uh, pharmacokinetic is, uh, uh, although oral bioavailability is low, but anticoagulant effect is consistent. Routine uh, coagulation monitoring is not required and uh, it is approved for the prophylaxis for prevention of venous thromboembolism followed by hip and knee replacement surgery. Oral factor 10A inhibitor like uh, uh, rivaroxaban, it directly binds to and inactivate factor 10A instead of inhibiting its synthesis. It acts rapidly without leg time and shorter lasting action. Anticoagulant action start rapidly within 3 to 4 hours and last for the 24 hours. It is uh, Its efficacy is similar to low molecular weight heparin followed by warfarin. Advantages are uh, routine anticoagulant uh, monitoring is not necessary and side effect like bleeding, nausea, hypotension, tachycardia and edema can be said. 
now therapeutic uses of anticoagulant uh, it is used for the prophylactic purpose uh, anticoagulant therapy is prevent formation of intravascular thrombus or further extension of already formed clot it does not break the clot or thrombus once it is formed so therapy it should be started with the low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin and continued for the for to 5 days simultaneously oral anticoagulant should be started with parenteral therapy because oral anticoagulant take time for the uh, action now anticoagulant in deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism venous thrombi are mainly formed from the fibrin network with a long tail that are then can be detached and result of embolization in the pulmonary arteries anticoagulants are used for the treatment and prevention of uh, thromboembolism for the treatment of venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism heparin and low molecular weight heparin is administered warfarin is also started simultaneously as heparin and low molecular weight heparin continued for the 4 to 5 days till the effect of the warfarin is obtained low molecular weight heparin therapy is administered subcutaneously for prevention of deep vein thrombosis and thromboembolism is uh, in the patient undergoing major surgery of the requiring prolonged immobilization low molecular weight heparin and fondaparin are the uh, are also effective laboratory monitoring a monitoring is usually not required for this low dose of heparin regimen in myocardial infarction anticoagulant are used in patient with high risk of embolism and uh, like uh, atrial fibrillation and for the prevention of mural thrombus anticoagulants help to prevent recurrent attack of myocardial infarction and stroke especially when given in the combination with low dose of the aspirin heparin is used during coronary angioplasty to prevent thrombosis in unstable angina low molecular weight heparin unfractionated heparin and fondaparin acts reduces the occurrence of the myocardial infarction in this patients atrial fibrillation the patient require prolonged oral anticoagulant therapy to reduce risk of the systemic uh, embolization and stroke disseminated intravascular coagulation Uh, heparin may be useful in selected cases to decrease consumption of the clotting factor circuit thank you for watching the video